Is that the one? Oh, Danny's Mark. buggy through. He's, a, he's an arsehole, isn't he? I'm sorry, I'm laughing, mate. That's the badger. Sorted. Right, that shit's done. Craig K is sorted. Panic over. Let's take this away from my van so it doesn't fall on it. Just a, a full on nuisance, Jake. <laughs> That's terrible. Welcome to another video of Mitch Fitz. Today is Kenwood Radio in a T6. Let's get into it. So, our first step is remove the vents. They just pop out, and then we can gain access to the four screws for the radio. So, I'll pop in a trim tool in the bottom corner, get my hand under. So we again on this side, and then we can pull out the vent section with a bit of a wiggle. Ooh. We've got some T20s to remove. So that's the four screws removed, and now we can go ahead and remove the radio. We've got various aerial connectors to remove. Always look a bit fiddly. So in our box of products, we've got a fitting kit to go with the Kenwood radio. This will be relevant to the model. So we're on a T6 today, so I've got a T6 fitting kit. So I've got a wiring harness to plug in. Simple as lining the cord locks up. And plugging it in. So there's all our, our adapters ready to go into our Kenwood. And then we've also got a fascia adapter. So this is going to get bolted in place here. And then our vents will go over the top to complete the look. And then we've got the brackets to bolt to our Kenwood and then that'll allow us to install the products and secure it in place. So we'll move on to the next step of wiring things up, running cables, and then we'll talk about the next stages of the other vehicles as well. DAB aerial. In your kits, you get one of the windscreen stick on DAB aerials. They're designed to go on the passenger side of the, the pillar in this location here. I'm going to show you how to install it, but it won't be a final fit because this will be coming out as this is just for the video's purposes. Basically what we're doing, we're going to run the cable through your dash, pop your A-pillar off. I'll open it up and just show you the product. So you get the wiring lead, which will run, this end will say at the head unit, so I would probably do it from the A-pillar through because this lead is smaller than this connector here. Right, so it comes with two halves. So you've got your aerial here and then your receiver. So the idea is what's going to happen is you'll peel this protective layer off, which will expose the contact. You see how you've got the metal contact on the receiver. So they're going to be assembled like this, lining up these two arrows here with these two raised parts on our receiver. They'll be stuck together like that. And then the idea is you're going to install just there. And this will have a copper contact underneath. So what you need to do is just scratch a little bit of paint off the A-pillar. And then once you scratch that up, line that up and that is the earth to the aerial. And then run your cable through your dashboard to the back of the radio. That's mainly on T5.1s. If you do have a T6 with factory DAB, you can buy an additional DAB retention lead. So this will use the factory aerial that's in your wing mirror. They're not quite as strong as this aftermarket solution but it does save you a lot of hassle of running cables. That is just a case of plugging it in here. So this is something that's available online, just a FACRA to DAB connector. Same again with the microphone. You can't retain your factory microphone if you have got one, so you will have to run the cable. So microphone location, I guess, is down to yourself where you want it. Ideally, I'd recommend in the top corner of your A-pillar over here but I've seen people have them on top of their binnacle here of the steering column. I've even seen them just dangling here before. It's up to you where you want to put it, but I would recommend on our pillar. So again, same principle, take your A-pillar off, run your cable through to the back of the head unit. Best way is probably down through the lower dash and then back up, or you could take your clocks out if you want to, to get some more access. The next step we're going to do is we're going to pop our radio in and plug it all in. So I've grabbed the brackets from our fitting kit just to show you the location, they're going to go here. There is a notch on them as a locator, so make sure that you get them on the right way around. So this one does have an R on it for the right hand side. So I think this will have a left on it. Yes, this has got an L on it for our left hand side. So next step is we're going to screw these onto our radio. 
So they're going to go line it up with these holes here and then you can slide it into the position that suits yourself the best. Just screw them in the furthest position back in this configuration. You'll find that the brackets are sat further back from the face of the radio. So when we put our fascia on, it will line up relatively flush. And then when the screen goes on, then it'll be obviously hidden anyway. Okay, so the next uh, lead, just to mention before we put the radio in, this is our navigation aerial. So they are saying stick it just here on top of the head unit. I don't know if there's enough space, but I would just suggest that you put it somewhere up higher the dash so that it can get a good signal through the windscreen and through into the dashboard. So anywhere, as long as it's facing up like that, anywhere along here, you've got plenty of room. Uh, get that mounted and that will give you your navigation area. Next step after installing that will be we'll connect all of our plugs up and then we will get the radio installed into the van. So with all of our leads connected we can screw the head unit in place, pop it all in, make sure that you're not trapping any cables so we can go all the way back so I've still got something in the way. Normally if you tuck it downwards towards the heater controls that gives you a bit more clearance. Let's see how we go. Right so that's in place and then we're going to grab our fascia, which I've lost. Here it is. Pop that on top. And then we're going to screw these down together using the original screws from the original head unit. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. So with our fascia now screwed in, we can put our vents back in and then we'll start about connecting the screen after. So I've grabbed our screen, our radius in place on in the dash. So we're gonna have to line up the pegs in here. We'll go through the two holes just here. And then once we've got that lined up, it'll make our connection with the electrics and then we can bolt it in place by these two here. So in this case of lining it up and dropping it in place. So now we'll screw it in and uh, get it powered up. Okay, I've grabbed all of our fixings for the screen so we've got these two here which are going to secure the screen in place so we'll start with doing those come around the back of the radio and you've got six threads so there's one two the next step we've got these two little screws here and you've got this plate here if you don't fit this plate the radio will not work this is to basically say it's all been secured and then it'll power up. So this goes around the back here. You can tilt your screen out of the way a bit. So with those two screws in place and that plate is now installed, the installation is now done. So you can position your head unit in the way you would like and you're ready to power it up. So with our screen now installed, we'll turn our ignition on, this will power up. So the lovely VW commercial vehicle splash screen. And now we've got our initial setup to do. So you see, that's where the trouble began. That smile. That damn smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got our head unit now fitted, fit on our phone, so we can use Apple CarPlay. The time will automatically set through the synchronizing of your uh, phone by GPS as well. There's also something we did do, we adjusted the screen height. I found it was a little bit too low, so when selecting park, I was a bit too close to the head unit. So there's two screws on each side, in this case of undoing those, and then this head unit slides up and down. There's three or four fixed heights. We're gonna work on the T6.1 video, which is coming very soon. That'll be using a lot more OEM integration. So on a T6, we found that you have to have your additional microphone, your additional GPS aerial, your additional DAB aerial. The T6.1 kit is a full OEM VW approved integration. So everything is a big plug and play kit retaining all factory functions. Another feature of the Kenwood head unit is all OEM steering wheel control functionality is retained. Now this fan doesn't have steering wheel controls, but if you do have a Highline or a van that's spec with steering wheel controls, you will be able to utilize all these buttons in the OEM manner and they will work with the head unit. So the next video we're gonna do, T6.1. Thanks for watching this one and uh, we'll get you in the next one. My guy's pretty like a girl, and he got my stories to tell. It's too close. Okay, <coughs> <coughs>